Hello Sparkles and welcome back to my channel Color Sparkle Shine. I am Missy and I am so glad that you are here today. So we are continuing our little journey here coloring in my cheap little Dollar Tree Gnome for the Holidays coloring and activity book. Yes, I got this from the Dollar Tree for a dollar twenty-five, and it is one of the cutest little cheap coloring books that I am just having a ton of fun with. <laughs> and for the month of December, we're gonna color gnomes out of this. So we've colored a few. If you want to go back, um, those videos will be linked down below. Today we're gonna color this little gnomey guy. And I've been keeping my gnomes pretty Christmas traditional, if you will, like lots of reds and greens, because it is Christmas. So, but I thought that that, why won't this stay in there? <laughs> I thought maybe um, we would change up a little bit today. So today we're gonna be using my marker set that I got from Timu. These are alcohol markers. Um, they're called Ye Touch Yauch Yauch Markers. Um, I think I got this set for like $35 off of Timu. There's 180 of them here, which I thought was a really good deal. To save time, I already picked um, my colors. So this is kind of going to be our color palette here. Um, with all those alcohol markers, sometimes it's a pain in the butt to go through. We have some traditional things like holly. So of course I have the red and the green for the holly. I have my Dollar Tree metallic markers. I have silver and gold because I thought we would do silver and gold um, bells. Of course, silver for the bulb and maybe a red bulb down here. I thought for our present, we would do some purples. And then for our Nomi fella, I thought we would do some blues. And for his boots, some browns. And once I get him all colored in, I might do some grays for his beard instead of like your traditional like white. So I just thought we would do something a little different today as we go forward. And the last videos we've talked about Christmas traditions, like whether you had um, stars or angels for your tree toppers and things of that nature. Another video we talked about your favorite memories as a child. This video, we're gonna talk about our favorite Christmas foods. So let's get into it. So we'll just go right in and take care of our little traditional colors here, our red and our green. So I think some of the favorite things about Christmas for many is food. Like, so, there are many, 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 many traditions, of course. So like you can say, do you do the what I feel is traditional, which is traditional ham for Christmas, or do you do turkey? I've heard some people, like especially like Italians and such, they don't do either. They do like lasagna and fish for Christmas. So I know like there's a bunch of different traditional kinds of things. I think the American tradition um, is ham, but I could be wrong. Um, we don't do like um, like a butt ham, I think is what they're called. We do a spiral ham for Christmas. Every once in a while, if we have a lot of people coming, um, my grandmother will like do a little bit of turkey too if we have a ton of people coming. So not everybody likes ham. But like, what is your favorite? Ham, turkey? Do you do fish? Because I know there's this traditional thing about um, the seven fishes or something like that. I don't know nothing about it. I'm not educated enough in that area to even speak upon it, but <laughs> I do know there is something like that. So we have um, a darker purple and a lighter purple. So I think I'm going to do the present, um, the darker purple, and then we'll do the bow and such with the lighter purple. I just felt like today we should do something a little different and kind of veer away from like traditional colors. Cause you know, it's my coloring book. I'm the boss of it and I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> That's what's fun about having, you know, your own coloring book. You're the boss and you can do what you want to do. And I just feel like doing something a little outside of the box would be fun today. So, I know for like Thanksgiving, it's very easy for me to say what my favorite dishes are, which is um, the stuffing 
stuffing is like my absolute favorite Thanksgiving traditional dish and I do like the green bean casserole but I think stuffing is my favorite <laughs> I really can't say like what my favorite dish is for Christmas so depending on what family I see so this year I'll be with my mom's side of the family um you know she does uh the spiral ham mashed potatoes last year she did do um all gratin potatoes and macaroni and cheese now if there is all gratin potatoes that is like one of my favorites but that isn't all the time and then you know your vegetable and a roll and whatever and those are all good and yummy but they're like not my favorite now, if we visit my family on my dad's side, or if I make my own Christmas dinner, we do mashed potatoes and homemade noodles. Now, if we have mashed potatoes and homemade noodles, then we're talking like that's my favorite. And then homemade noodles just means um, it's egg yellows and flour and you roll it out and you cut long noodles and then you cook it in the broth or the drippings of the ham. And then when your mashed potatoes are done, you pile a bunch of those on your plate and you make like what we call a well <laughs> in the middle of your mashed potatoes. <laughs> And you pour those homemade noodles with all of those drippings right in that little well of mashed potatoes. And that's how we eat them. And I know that's probably very weird for some people. But that's like our family's favorite, mashed potatoes and homemade noodles. And you have to eat the noodles on top of your mashed potatoes. Now, when my husband came into the family, and the first time I took him to my dad's side of the family, and he he went to go make his plate because um, we do it like buffet style. Um, he put his noodles on the side because he did not know that. And we were all laughing at him. And when he saw our plates, he was like, ew. <laughs> but he's been married now to me. This, this January 3rd will be 26 years. Um, he now has converted and eats his homemade noodles on his mashed potatoes. But that is some of our absolute favorite things. So if I had to pick, if I was eating with my family on my dad's side, um, definitely mashed potatoes and homemade noodles. And if I'm eating dinner with my mom's side of the family, it is definitely, um, I would have to say the homemade au gratin potatoes. Yeah, there is one other thing that my grandmother makes on my mom's side. She doesn't do it all the time, but when she does, it is very good. And that is zucchini pie with a whole bunch of different spices and cheeses. It's very rich. You can't eat a lot. The crust is made with crescent rolls. Um, and the insides are very, you know, very cheesy, very rich, very spicy. <laughs> can't eat a lot of that, but a slice of that is very good. So I find it funny how there's like all these different traditions and you know what people really really enjoy so I think that's it so I have to say I don't think my I don't think Christmas I don't think Christmas is my favorite like holiday to eat I don't think Thanksgiving really is either <laughs> except for stuffing and I do love to make um I do love to make turkey soup after um, if there's enough ham or if I make my own ham, sometimes my husband absolutely loves to have, um, ham, potatoes, green beans, and dumplings, and that's always good, but I'm not thrilled, like, with Christmas dinner, so to speak. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense, but, um, then there comes the Christmas desserts. Now, my favorite thing to do 
for that is get together with family and make homemade cookies. Now, I do love doing that. Absolutely. I love making homemade cookies. And my favorite homemade cookie is peanut butter blossoms. Um, some people call them peanut butter kiss cookies. That's just the peanut butter cookie with the kiss, the Hershey's kiss in the middle. Love, 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 love those cookies. My husband's favorite Christmas cookie is snickerdoodle. He loves snickerdoodles. But I love making cookies. My grandmother also makes um, this thing called a refrigerator cake, which is chocolate graham crackers and homemade whipped cream. And she does layer after layer after layer after layer after layer after layer. I think there's like 30 layers of graham crackers, whipped cream. Th and then you put it in the refrigerator and all the graham crackers like soften. So the cake, like when you put it in the fridge, it's like this big. But by the time you serve it, it's like this big. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. Um, my husband and my brother-in-law can eat a whole one of those themselves. They love it. It's okay. And my, you know, I will take a bite here and there. It's okay. But um, I think cookies, lady fingers, um, some people call those cream horns, the peanut butter kiss cookies, nut rolls is another one of my favorites. Uh, I don't eat a lot of pie. And like I said, the refrigerator cake is kind of like a cake. Um, it's okay. My husband and like I said, my brother-in-law, my grandfather, they love it. I can take it or leave it. I would rather just have a a little cookie. I think that's like my favorite food of Christmas. And then like for Christmas Eve, if we get together or we do anything, we always eat something like totally opposite of that. So like Chinese or something saucy like I said like maybe a lasagna or spaghetti and meatballs and see I prefer that <laughs> I prefer that over like the ham and mashed potatoes and all that so I don't know as I sit here and I think about it I'm like hmm you know Christmas food doesn't like have this huge appeal on me one thing I will have to say, though, is my grandmother, she makes, my grandmother on my mother's side, um, she makes enough food to feed an army, and she likes to do, she likes to have us over early, and what she'll do is what she calls a d'oeuvres, or hors d'oeuvres, however you want to say it, and she'll have crackers, and cheese, and salami, and pepperonis, and big, huge shrimps from Costco, and um, tartar sauce, and um, you know, all of that stuff. Um, she'll have salsa and chips. Sometimes she makes homemade mozzarella sticks. And I like that better than I do the Christmas dinner. <laughs> I'd rather have a plate full of like all these different little yummies and goodies like crackers and cheese and pepperonis and little shrimps. They're not little, they're huge. Um, four or five shrimps and some salsa and cheese and all that stuff and give me some cookies and I'm happy. Like I like all that better than like your traditional Christmas dinner. I'm a little weird when it comes to stuff like that. <laughs> and usually what happens is we all fill up on the hors d'oeuvres <laughs> and then when it's time to eat um, our dinner, we're, we're stuffed. <laughs> so. Oh, but anyways, those are some of our favorite little things. That's the only thing I can think of. So it just depends on what side of the family we're eating with, what we're being served. And also on my dad's side, um, they would never do a spiral ham. They would do a butt ham, like your traditional ham. And then, this is interesting too. Um, talking about ham and food, because that's our topic today. And believe me, as I'm rambling on and on and on, please put your comments down below what your traditional foods are and what your favorite stuff is, what you look forward to for Christmas. When I met my husband, 
and they live in the mountains of Pennsylvania when I met my husband. They would eat ham too, but they had this thing called a ham loaf. Some people know what a ham loaf is, some people do not. So a ham loaf is kind of what you would think it is. It's kind of like a meatloaf. So it's ground up butt ham with cornmeal and some spices and um, brown sugar. And they form it with an egg, <clears throat> excuse me, into a loaf. Looks just like a meatloaf. And we would make what my mother-in-law would call the secret sauce, which is just butter and um, brown sugar. And you would pour it all over that and you'd bake it in the oven for a couple hours. And you slice it just like a meatloaf. And they would serve it, you know, with all your traditional things, mashed potatoes, green beans, all, all the traditional things. But they didn't have a ham or a spiral ham. They had ham loaves. So when I got married, I was introduced to ham loaf. And when I started making my own Christmas dinners, my family, my kids, they all preferred ham loaf over spiral hams and your, you know, your regular butt hams. They preferred um, ham loaf. My son and my daughter to this day still ask, Mom, are we going to have a ham loaf for Christmas? Um, now that we moved and we now live in New Jersey, <laughs> there is no hope unless I get a grinder and make my own of finding um, ham loaves. That's just not something you're going to find here. But um, they love it. And they absolutely would prefer that over a regular ham. So I find that very interesting. So how, like if we probably went to a different part of the country, I can't even imagine some of the things that they may eat. I just find that very interesting. You know, I should tell you guys a story too, why I'm on this little tangent about food and how different cult, it's not cultures, just different parts of the country just eat different things so I'm originally from New Jersey the Jersey Shore I was born and raised and we moved to Pennsylvania to be closer to my dad's side of the family when I was about 12 or 13 somewhere in there so I had my very first boyfriend in Pennsylvania and I met him just a few months after we moved from New Jersey and Jersey Shore is pretty city it's, you know, it's not the city, but it's pretty close to the city. So it's kind of more city-like. And where we moved in Pennsylvania, about 45 minutes from Pittsburgh, um, very country. I mean, like, really country. Um, real quick, I do not have a flesh-colored, um, well, maybe I do. Let me look. Let me look. I'll look while I talk. Um, very country. Very, very country folk. Um, when we moved there, we there was a lot of culture shock. I, I, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be ignorant or anything like that. It was just a lot different. So my boyfriend, 29, let's go for that, um, lived up in the mountains. And when we got together, it was right around the holidays, and he invited me to his house um, for Thanksgiving dinner. And I was all excited to go, thinking Thanksgiving dinner, you know, traditional Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> so when his mom brought out the tray for Thanksgiving dinner, which would usually, the only thing I would know, hold a turkey, there was these two small little critters on it that were facing each other. No head, just like neck to neck, body, and they had four legs. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm looking at this thing, and I am like, what the heck is this? And I mean, they're like all excited about it. And then, the, then I noticed that there was something fluffy around these little critters. 
and it was squirrel tails. Like one squirrel tail was here and one squirrel tail was here, like rounding the two little critters that were kind of like facing each other with no heads. So my only thought was this had to be squirrel. So <laughs> I leaned over to him. His name was Tim. I still remember his name to this day. I'll never forget this as long as I live because I was already in culture shock. I'm like, are those squirrels? He was so proud. Yes, I shot them this morning. They're fresh. I got Thanksgiving dinner. He was so proud of these squirrels. I was like, you guys are eating squirrel for Thanksgiving? He, he was so proud of these squirrels. He shot them that morning. <laughs> Needless to say, Tim and I did not work out. <laughs> our, our courtship was very short. We were like from two totally different worlds. Um, but I will never forget that as long as I live ever because I, I want it out of there. I want it out of there. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was in complete torture. I was just like totally, I just could not believe that somebody was going to eat a squirrel, number one, and eat it for a holiday meal. And I mean, like, they were like, they were excited that they were going to have this squirrel. So I want to, so I'm going to tell you another, this was the breaking point. This is when I decided that Tim and I were not going to be able to be cat compatible. So after this little adventure, um, he picked me up another time to go out for a date and he wanted to show me this spot up in the mountains because I was fresh from the city, you know, I don't really didn't know mountain life and he had this like really cool thing that he wanted to show me but it was I don't even remember if we ever saw it or not but um it was really snowing and he had like a, his car was like a Lincoln it was like a tank um and he ended up hitting a deer on the mountain while it was snowing and we were going pretty slow I mean we, like maybe 25 miles an hour because it was snowing pretty hard um so when he hit it, it, you know, flew a couple hundred feet, maybe not even that far, just, you know, flew up a little bit and it was hurt. You could tell it was hurt. I think its legs were broken. So it was kind of flailing on the road. I don't want to say depressing, horrible things. I had never hit an animal before. So I was totally like devastated. I was freaking out. I was crying. I was hysterical. This poor thing was on the ground. It was flailing about. It kept trying to get up but it, it was hurt pretty bad. So he got out of the car. He didn't say anything or anything. He didn't, you know, nothing. Just got out of the car. He said, just wait here. I'll be right back. Um, I'm thinking he's going to get out of the car, be a hero, take care of this poor animal. He goes into the trunk. I hear him back there for a few minutes. He comes around. I can see in his hand that he has a tire iron out of his hand. And before I could even think about what he was going to do with that thing. Let's just say he bludgeoned that poor thing to death. And picked it up. Threw it in the trunk. I did not speak to him the whole way home. I didn't speak at all. I was in total shock. Threw that thing into the trunk. Took it home. Told his mom and his brothers. They hung it up in a tree. Skinned it within like 10 minutes. And we're cutting slices off of that thing and frying it up for their snack. <laughs> Why I'm like hysterical. What are you doing? Um, yeah, that was it. I never saw Tim after that. That was it. So, like, it just. But to them, that was so normal. To them, that they literally shot and ate all of their animals. Um, all of their meats, if you will. I have never in my life ever seen anything like that. All of our meat came from grocery stores. You know what I mean? So I just was that. But that to them was absolutely normal. And now that I'm a little older and I understand things a little bit different, I also understand that there, there was nothing else really to help that deer. Um, it was going to die regardless and it would have suffered. Like if we just would have drove off and left it, it would have suffered a horrible, painful death. 
So in reality, he kind of did it a favor by putting it out of its misery quickly. And then he didn't let the poor thing go to waste. You know, it just wasn't a senseless death. So now that I'm a little older, <laughs> I see the wisdom in it. But as a 15, 16 year old kid, fresh from the Jersey Shore to the mountains of Pennsylvania, I was horrified, horrified. <laughs> Now that I'm older, I find that stuff very interesting, how different people live. So anyways, I'm going to quit telling you my horrific stories. I think I'm going to go in real quick and find a gray for this. Um, I'm going to pause the video or I'll just let it play and we'll just skip over this because um, I think I would like to do a little bit of a gray beard in here. Okay, so I have cool gray and they both say cool gray, but one's lighter than the other. So I'm going to use this one to do the beard and this one kind of like for shadows. Just I just wanted to do something a little different than your traditional Christmas colors because I've been doing a lot of the traditional Christmas colors for um, everything. So I just thought it'd be fun. But anyways, if anybody is out there watching and they hunt for their food for the winter, I am not knocking you. Truly, I am not. Like I said, now that I'm older, I truly see the wisdom in what they were doing. It's just that I was a young girl, fresh, like from the city, if you will, who's never in her life ever seen anything like that. Um, it just was complete culture shock. <laughs> um, I just remember the feelings, you know. And I'm a total animal lover, so to see in the moment what felt like brutality you know what I mean it, what it just blew my mind it just blew my mind but in reality it really wasn't brutality he really was it was really kind of merciful because like I said this poor animal probably would have suffered it would have it would have suffered so um I am not knocking those who hunt and stock their freezers uh for winter with deer and elk and whatever it is that you hunt really and truly I'm not because there's a lot of wisdom in that it just took a little maturing to realize it <laughs> if you will so maybe there's some out there who eat venison or squirrel or quail or something of that nature. I'm not sure what, what birds are in season or anything. Duck? I don't know if duck's in season. I'm not sure. There might be some people out there that eat those for Christmas. Because Tim and his family, I'm sure this Christmas, if I was to meet up with him again, I am sure his family to this day is going to have squirrel for their Christmas. Or no, I don't know what they did for Christmas. I didn't stick around that long. But I'm sure they had squirrel for their Thanksgiving dinner because that's what they knew and that's what they liked and honestly there is absolutely nothing wrong with that so I'm going to color in his little fingernails Go right here and I don't know do I like his beard I like his beard gray but do I want to color his mustache that color too or leave that white Cause that looks really white. I think I'm gonna do that and use this and just bring in some highlights. I think I like that, I think I like that contrast. So now that I've told you some of my crazy food stories and stuff that happened to me, please down in the comments, <laughs> tell me like what some of your tradition for food is and what you do or what you, what maybe what your family does different now than you did as a kid. Cause like I said, I grew up as a kid eating um, spiral hams. And then when I met my husband and started my own family, they preferred ham loaves. And that became our tradition. So you may have had one tradition as a kid. And then when you got your own family, had a little bit different. I find that stuff very interesting. All right, I think he looks cute. I mean, definitely different than what we've done before. 
We've done more traditional Christmas. But I think he looks adorable. The only thing is, I think I'm going to give him um, a little bit of, um, we'll use this color, a little bit of like a floor. Like he needs a little something, something sitting on. Just give him a little bit of a floor here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like a shadow. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but my dog just came in and burped. So, that was not me. Alrighty. Doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit of a shadow. And then we can go in with, just to finish it off, we can go in with some inks. And I know I think I'll do purple because we got a purple present down here. We'll just go in with a little bit of inks and we'll ink a little bit of our background up. Just so that there's a little bit of color in the background. Not a lot. Sometimes I have problems with white spaces. I'm trying to get better with that. Like it's okay if the background is white. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has that issue sometimes. Sometimes it's hard just to leave like a white space. I'm trying to get a little better with it, but sometimes I do better than others. Just give them a little bit of a purple background there. And I think we'll call this finish. Oop, I don't want to get purple on his beard. I mean, not his beard, his mustache there, because I left that white. And I think we'll call this... I know I'm shaking the camera, because I'm really shaking the um, desk. Oop, don't rip the page now, miss. I think he turned out really cute. What do you guys think? He's a very different, non-traditional gnome, Christmas gnome, but I still like the colors. I like the blue. I like the purple. I don't know. I just thought I wanted to do something different because um, this is the gnome I did my last one with Crayola crayons. I did very traditional, red and green. Um, I did red here. Like I've done a lot. I think that's all. Uh, and this one, lots of red and green. So that's why I thought it'd be really fun for us to do something a little bit different. And I do like that I left his mustache bright white compared to his beard. Like I think that's a really nice contrast. So there is our little Nomi friend. I hope that you guys enjoyed this color along with me. Um, I encourage you guys, we still have a couple more to do before Christmas. Um, you might still be able to find this book from the Dollar Tree. I encourage you to get it and we can continue to do color alongs until Christmas. It's only $1.25 and it's from the Dollar Tree. But until next time, guys, take care of you. Thank you so much for giving up a portion of your day to spend it with me. Look down in the drop box. Follow me on my social medias on Instagram and TikTok. And I'll see you over there. Bye, y'all.